Welcome to today's service. Please feel at Jesus, feel at home. You are very, very, very welcome into this realm and atmosphere of worship. And before our preacher of the day comes up, I just want us to raise our hearts to Jesus and give him our gratitude, send him our appreciation for dying on the cross, for saving our lives. Because if it was not for him, we would not have been here. So we bless you, Jesus, and we glorify you this day, Lord. You deserve all praise and honor, Jesus. And we offer our worship to you this morning. Just give him your heart and your body and your soul. And let him welcome him into your hearts. Welcome him into your living room, into your bedroom, into your office, into your car. And let him sit. Jesus, we welcome you to this place. Feel us as we worship you. Receive our worship, O oh Lord. You are worthy and honored, Father. We bless your name, Jesus. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of we Let's watch and pray, find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him my own. Sin had left a crimson stain, he was. Street water snow. Jesus paid it all, all to Him my own. Sin had left a crimson stain. He was street water snow. Come on, somebody worship Jesus. Worshippers today, Lord. We are so humbled to be your praisers today, Lord. Please receive our worship, Jesus. And now before the throne, I stand in the complete. Jesus died my soul to save. This repeat, Jesus, Jesus oh, to Him, my own, oh, to Him, my own, oh, 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 oh,
And Ronnie is translating for me. And we are glad to be sharing from God's word. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, we will be reading from the book of Luke. Luke chapter 22. Luke from the verse 39 to 46. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless his word. Amen. Amen. And he came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw and knelt down and prayed. And he prayed saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven strengthening him. And being in an agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. 
mugoloko ke musabe mulemoku yingira mukukemebwa i may praise the lord the title or the theme of my message is pray that you may not enter into temptation pray that you may not enter into temptation now I want to give context to what was happening here. This was a time when Jesus was about to be crucified. The end of his time on earth was drawing fast close. And Jesus was anticipating some things that were going to happen. Well, he being God at the same time man, he was able to envision and see what the future looked like. And Jesus had tried to prepare his disciples about the difficult time that was about to happen. He had told them that one of them was going to betray him, another was going to deny him, he was going to be crucified, and he was going to be killed. And he had told them that it was a difficult time. Difficult to process what he was saying, but also difficult because things were actually going to happen. What the things were talking about. <laughs> In verses 31 of that same chapter, he had told the disciples, this is his description of what was going to happen. He had told them, Peter, Peter, I have seen Satan. He is going to try to sift you like wheat. In fact, that word I have seen is not only for Peter, but all the disciples who are saying, Peter, Peter, I see Satan. He has a plot for all of you. So you see how Jesus was describing the time that is about to happen? That <laughs> it was a time of great uh, anxiety, a great suffering that was about to happen. And what is he telling them? That's what I want to teach you today. In that we may learn some things. Because just as the disciples, we are living in some really uncertain times today. There are things that we hear and they trouble the heart. There are things that are actually happening and they bring a lot of fear and anxiety and uncertainty of what the future looks like. As I interact with some people in this church and outside of this church, it seems people are having a really hard time. Whether economic stress, financial stress, marital stress, relational stress. You see, many of us, we, we pray a lot when things are hard, you know, and that's not bad. But if you live a consistent life of prayer, it gives you mileage that the things when they come, they find you already somewhere established and strong, and you can be easily, uh, you can easily overcome this thing. And that happened. So, Make prayer a custom. Now listen to this. As was his custom, he went to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. Do you want to stand and overcome things that are coming at you every day? Point number two. Follow the master wherever he leads you. Oh, 
Follow Jesus wherever he leads you. Because the disciples call is to follow Jesus. They walk and they follow wherever he leads. Because the, the Luganda translation of disciple it's the one who is taught literally. <laughs> Not so? And Jesus as a, as a master they call him a, a disciple, the one who teaches. Brothers and sisters, there are some things that come against us, but we remain standing because wherever Jesus is leading, we are following. Wherever he is leading, we are following. The call of the disciple is to sit down and listen to what the master is teaching. And often times, the students of the master, they lived so close with the master that you would not differentiate. There are some things that reflected on them because of the kind of person they were spending time with. Ha. So do you see that idea? The time spent with the Lord, with His Word, as you continue to grow, it, you will start to be that forgiving person. You will start to be that loving person. You will start to be, to be that generous person. Because the character of Jesus Christ now is reflected in your life. That's why the Master and the disciples spent time together because he wants to invest himself in them. So the disciples followed him because the primary call of us as a church is to follow Jesus wherever he leads us. If verses 40 and when he came to the place you have to have a place church you have to have some moment that you consecrate and set apart for prayer anyway when he came to that place he said to them you pray that you may not enter into temptation the temptation he's referring to there is not a temptation to sin like sexual temptation or theft or that. But he was referring to the trying moment that was about to come. Where Satan was about to sift their faith. Where they would see their master being tossed about with, with, with suffering in their own faith would be shaken. Because betrayal was going to happen. One of them was going to deny him. And suffering was actually going to happen. But what did Jesus tell them? For you to stand. For you to remain standing. Pray. Saba. So point number three. Respond to any impending crisis by praying. Oh, come on, church. Praise the Lord. Because a believer's primary response to a crisis of any magnitude is prayer. Uh -huh child of God. What is stressing you right now? What seems to be so hard before you today? Perhaps right now or perhaps as you zoom into the future you're like uh-uh, I don't know what that is going to be like. Jesus 
predicted he saw Yesu a hard and trying moment he turns to them and tells them pray yes be a loving husband to your wife. And the women, respect your husbands. But, you pray. Take your children to hospital. Go see a doctor. Eat well. But, pray. Because our primary response to crisis of any kind is Prayer. and he withdrew from them that's verses 41 and he withdrew from them for a short distance and he himself knelt down and prayed there is a point there I want to share with you lead by example in praying Thank you. Because you see, Jesus wasn't only telling them to pray, he himself was also praying. Especially as pastors. The way we can come up here and tell you, pray church, pray church, pray church, pray church. But when we ourselves are not living at that example. You see, it is easier to say some of these things. But Jesus was a man who not only told others, others to do something, but he himself led by example. So likewise, be an example of prayer to your children. Let your work may see a praying person in you. I am privileged to, be, to have been born to parents who are prayerful. My mom, among so many things she taught me, was prayer. My dad worked in the city and we stayed in the village. In very poor, you think you've seen poverty? Ours, ours was you know that really really exactly actually that's very true they called us that but, and we lived in a small house a muddy house no roof uh, there are some things like a papyrus we throw on the and my mom's clothes and other things so every time it rained our prayer was Lord may our house not fall but in that poverty in that lack I saw something my mom did two things she had a friend in God is word. Every time she would be with, with her Bible and kneeling down to pray. So I grew up seeing that. Loving to pray. Loving to study God is word. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. One day when I made, I think, about 13 years, I don't know where I got money, but I was thinking, I need to buy for my mama a gift. Two things came to my mind. I need to buy her a new Bible because hers is very old. And I also bought for her a mat so that she can kneel on to pray because that's all I saw. Now the Lord has blessed them. They had the worst house on the village. They had the, the, the worst house everyone laughed at it. In fact, in fact, when my mom built that house, people said she's going to rear goats. And the next day it was us in the house. Right now they have the best house on the village. Yes. They prayed. 
In that time when they were being laughed at, God answered their prayer. I remember going to that house and I cried because it was bent, it was about to fall. Right now when I go there, I can't help but praise the name of the Lord by how God has blessed them. But the idea there is that they led a life of prayer and we saw how they prayed and how God answers prayer. Amen, church. Verses 42 says, but he prayed saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. The cup signified the suffering of Christ which was about to come. And Jesus being God but also human was weighed down by by, by, by the thought of having to go through that suffering. And so he prayed to his father because he knew the father listens. But also he left room for God's will to be done. So another, another point there is pray but leave room for God's will to be done. Because sometimes we pray and we even go give God ways he should answer our prayer. And when he's not answering, Oh, people are frustrated. Maybe we think we have sinned. Maybe God is not there. But the answer to that is to pray is good. And God does hear prayer. But sometimes not our will prevails, but God's will prevails. And God's will is not necessarily always, always uh, what we want, but it's actually a good thing for us. Come on, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Did God take away the cup from Jesus? Yes. No. But how many of us are glad that through the suffering and death of Jesus Christ, now we are redeemed, but now we are saved, now we are children of God, now we are eternally secure because of what Jesus endured on the cross? So pray, but leave room for God's will to be done. There are some girls I've talked to before. And I keep hearing this, this statement. Pastor, this man showed interest in me. Pastor, I even prayed. I fasted that this will work out. Jesus says, you ask and it will be given to me. Yes. Why? Why did he leave me? Yes. The answer is that person was praying but he was not leaving room for God's will to be done. And this is the good news. God's will is the best for you. It may, it may not be what you want, but like Jesus didn't want that, but God's will is always good for us. Let's read the next verse there and learn something. As Jesus prayed, in verses 43, there appeared to him an angel from heaven strengthening him. Lesson. When we pray, God gives us supernatural strength to stand amid the things that come 
at us. Did you hear that church? Sometimes strength is all we need. Jesus prayed what was given him strength may God give you strength today may God give you strength to anything that comes to you today that you don't know what to make of may he give you strength church sometimes some things we pray for might not go away but you can count on God to give us strength there is a time Paul was praying for something he had a thorn he had a thorn in his in his body and he didn't know no, 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 people don't know what to make of that but uh, the idea is he was wrestling with something that was painful to him and he was praying to God to take it away from him what, did, what was God's answer to him? my grace is sufficient for you because my strength is made manifest in your weakness. Oh, come on, church. God's strength is sufficient for you. May God give you his grace. Some of it's all you need. Amen. Amen. And when he prayed, and God strengthened him, being in agony, verses 44, being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. That his sweat became like great drops uh, of blood falling from the ground. The intensity of the test calls for intensity of prayer. Intensity of the test calls for intensity of prayer. The more Jesus felt the weight of what was about to happen is the more, thank you, is the more he prayed. The more you feel like you are weighed down by something you, you know, that is heavy on your heart is the more you should Pray Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But often times, what happens to us when something weighs us so down? What happens to us when you, you see you look at the future and you don't see any hope. What happens to us when, 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 when we look all around, there, is, there seems to be so much happening around us? Look at what we do like in verse 45. While Jesus was praying with intensity because of the immense weight of what was about to happen, he came maybe to find the disciples also, maybe, you know, praying all the more. <laughs> oh, verses 45. When he arose from prayer, he came to the disciples, found them what? <laughs> For why? Because of sorrow. The, the Bible here says they are sleeping for sorrow. What sorrow? The things that Jesus was telling them, <laughs> they were hard to process. Reality was kicking in that Jesus is going to die. Where, where, where are they going to go? Where is Jesus going to leave them? They had built a whole life around Jesus. Ah, we see but even while he was speaking with them, the, the, the yeah. people who were going to, uh, to arrest him came. <laughs> 
the, the time he was predicting wasn't very far it was right there at Adika ekisere kyakazigizigi kyali abagambira okusaba kyamala muni kijja mudachi kantono Brothers and sisters, when sorrow increases, when uncertainty increases, pray all the more. Oh, I didn't hear an amen there, church. An amen, church. Jesus found them doing what we do most <laughs> when things are not going our way. <laughs> oh, he disappointed me, you can't sleep. Oh, I've lost my job, you can't sleep. Oh, this is not coming through. Let me go sleep. It can be a literal sleep or figurative sleep of, of abandoning the place of prayer. Thank you. You understand that? When he came and saw them sleeping, verses 46, he said to them, what did he say to them? Why are you Sleeping. But why are you sleeping means the times we are living in call us to rise up the level of prayer, not to sleep. With this COVID situation, why are you sleeping? With this economic stress, why are you with your marriage falling apart, why are you? With your children straying away from the Lord, why are you? Your family is bound. Why are you? What did he say to them? Now rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. Shall I have some people rise from this church to pray for our country? Shall you rise and pray for your family? Things are not well. Rise and pray. What is happening in your family today? Is it children who are not going to school? Is it a husband who, who has turned out to be unloving and violent? Is it lack, financial lack right now? What is it? Jesus has said, yes, what Rise up and pray right now. Talk to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There is nothing that is impossible with you. There is nothing that is hard for you. Around. You have said, pray. You have asked us to pray. In light of the things we see right now, maybe even those that we don't see as yet, we pray right now. For the times of uncertainty we live in, for the great trials and testing of many of us that are going through, whether personally, maybe families, maybe communities, maybe nations, our nation and nations of gracious God. With the pandemic right now ravaging the countries. With the financial stress right now. And the needs that your people have. You have said, you have told us to pray. Lift up those, those needs to God right now. We pray for the church of Jesus Christ. To be the light in such an increasingly darker world. 
that our light will shine in our world today that needs the brilliance of Jesus' light in us. Oh, the world is longing for that. May we we shine forth the light of Jesus. We pray for Christians who are going through persecution right now because of their faith. Oh, strengthen them. You, oh Lord, who prayed and and the angel brought strength Lord, we pray for that strength to the suffering church. That strength may be a testimony for Jesus. We thank you because when we pray, you hear and you answer prayer because we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. That wasn't only for this session. It wasn't only for this time to pray. But like I said, make a time, make a place, and interact with your Lord. Your life will never be the same. God bless you.